Yes, I know Matt has a lot of questions about herd immunity. My question is more on, on the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. I read it out to my husband yesterday as it crossed the Bloomberg terminal, and he said, "Oh, what's the trial data? How many people, you know, do we rely on this?" And actually, we we don't know yet. Do you believe that this study is? I mean, it's legitimate, but it, is it you know substantive enough to actually take in as gospel? You know, thank you for having me this morning. It's great to be here. What's really nice to see in this new study out of Israel is the real world data on how very, very nominal vaccination is at curbing the, the, the case rates, cutting the death rate, and then ultimately we think cutting the risk for transmission. You know, when we look at the clinical trial data, that's all before the vaccine is reaching large swaths of the population. So it's always beautiful to see real world data back up and even, you know, corroborate further what the vaccine trial data shows, which is that these vaccines are truly incredible. But what I don't understand, and again, you know, the scientific community doesn't really agree on this. So first of all, it's how do we achieve herd immunity? When do we go back to normal? Are we going to be stuck in this pattern of people getting vaccinated but still having to social distance for the next two years because of variants? So let's, let's frame this. We are in a race globally between two key factors. If you think about two runners on a track, you've got one is the, the, the virus and its ability to mutate. And the longer the virus is given the chance to you know, infect people globally and in communities, the longer we give it the chance to mutate and outsmart our body's immune reaction to it or, or immunity from vaccination. The other runner on the track is our human ability to vaccinate large swaths of the population. So we will achieve her immunity when we are winning that race, when the human ability to vaccinate people, get vaccines into people's arms, overtakes the, the virus's ability to mutate and outsmart um, immunity. The, you know what? The interesting thing um, I took from the Steven Soderbergh film Contagion, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it, Dr. McBride, is that Matt Damon is naturally immune to the movie virus. The Wall Street Journal editorial, Dr. Marty McCarry, says he thinks 55% of Americans may have a natural immunity, plus the fact that we've got 15% of people who've gotten at least one shot in the arm already, and um, he thinks two-thirds of the American public have been exposed to uh, the, um, the, the virus enough to have been inoculated. So he thinks herd immunity will come by April. That seems really soon. What do you think? Yes, I mean, you know, this is a really, really heated debate in the scientific community, which I'm lucky to be part of. And, you know, I think that is, while I am an optimist, I think that is overly optimistic. What I like that I've heard coming out of the Bloomberg School of Public Health at um, the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health is, is the, 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 the real recognition of what scientists and people in the medical field, like myself, suspect and think is already probably true, that the vaccine not only protects against disease and death, it also likely protects us from transmission. But I don't think April is realistic as much as I would like to say that. So let me also ask you about recurring vaccinations. I mean, with the flu, the typical, I guess what the Spanish flu has morphed into today, we have to get vaccinated again every single year is that going to be the same with the COVID vaccination? Are, are new mutations going to mean every uh, spring we have, or every fall we have to get new vaccinations? So remember, the question is, is this. What is the durability of the immunity that we, that we achieve when we are infected with coronavirus or we are vaccinated against coronavirus? How long does that immunity last? And the answer to that question is crucial, and that will help us determine, you know, how often we need to get booster shots. Um, but if you go back to that race, you know, the race between the viral ingenuity and our ability to vaccinate wide swaths of the patient, the population, um, you know, the, the question is only going to be answered in real time. We're watching this phenomenon play out in real time. So when we learn that the variants have outsmarted our immune system, then we will know that we need to have booster shots. And by the way, 
you know, the, 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 the pharmaceutical companies are already working overtime to develop boosters should we need them. Dr. McBride, let's talk about schools. I don't know if you can tell, but Francine is quite excited that UK schools are opening again on March 8th here in the US. They're at least hoping to open K through eight schools by the end of April. But there's a raging debate going on on whether or not that is going to be safe for teachers if they aren't vaccinated already. Should they feel safe returning to school if they haven't gotten their shot yet? So it's a really good question. I'm a mom of three kids who are desperate to go back to school. Um, and I myself understand very well how important it is for their social emotional health. Not only that, for you know our economy and for you know, working parents, school is essential. So here's the thing, you know, it, you, you can't just say it's, it's safe to open schools. You, you, you have to have risk mitigation in place, right? So it's safe to open schools if, and the if is crucial, the if is, if your ability had the ability to, you know, well ventilate the school, you know, distance kids and teachers and staff and faculty from one another, if there's adequate hand washing, um, and and of course that masks are enforced. I personally do not believe that every single teacher must be vaccinated before schools can be open, because if you have adequate and aggressive risk mitigation elements, you're by definition protecting teachers. But you know that is controversial. I think that you know. It's, 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 there's no one size fits all for every school or every teacher or every child around the country. But I think there are ways to make it work. And it's been shown in studies to work in certain areas of the world where case rates even are high.